the beauty, the magnitude, the vastness. That there, my friend, is Alaska. Indigenous people refer to it as the Great Land. And for every snowboarder, this is it. Great indeed. Today, we reach the summit of our journey, one that started in Jackson Hole, where we saw an all-mountain throwdown. And he stops it! She's showing us that this is what the future looks like. We followed Winter North along the Rocky Mountain Range and west of the Monashies to Baldface Valhalla, where we got to see what it takes to explore these lands. Yeah, Robin! It all went well. Yeah. Now, seven of the world's best riders earned their chance to claim victory, to be distinguished as the world's best full-spectrum snowboarder. Oh, what a rush! Will young blood take the reins? Damn, you are smoking us! Or will experience reign supreme? Friggin' sick, run! The journey ain't easy. <laughs> but heck, easy isn't why we're here. Watch out, snow is super rippable. We find ourselves at the Tordrillo Mountain Lodge, looking up at a blank canvas where history will be written. Oh my God. This is the final stop of the Natural Selection Tour. And today, we crown champions. The first two stops of natural selection changed the face of professional snowboarding forever. And here we are at our third and final stop in the Tordrillo mountain range, anticipating a beautiful day of historical snowboarding. I am Salema Masakela, joined by Mary Walsh and the one and only Travis Rice. Travis, as these riders are waiting for the sun to, to rise, what is this anticipation like? I mean, it's it's palpable. This is so gold. When you're up ahead of the game, ahead of schedule, waiting for the sun to reach the bottom of the face, knowing you got to drop, it, it gets no better. Mary, what does Alaska mean to snowboarding for this final? In snowboarding, Alaska is the end game. This is where the big dogs play. And coming here today for everyone is two months in the making. They're excited. We will check in with the fourth member of our team, T-Bird, for conditions. Thanks, guys. The atmosphere up here is incredible. It is a beautiful blue sky, zero wind, blower pow day, and we're about to get finals underway with six of the world's best. We started with seven riders. One was eliminated in semifinals. Let's check out how that went down. Thanks, T-Bird. In the women's semifinals, I mean, look at that bracket. It was Hannah Beeman, Robin Van Jin, and Zoe sadowski sanat Of note, do you remember Jackson Hole stop one? Robin Van Jin going down to Zoe sadowski sanat who was a wild card, Mary. I mean, this is super exciting. All three of these women were in Jackson competing at that event, and to have them back together again in this kind of finals three-person face-off is incredible. Um, what's gonna happen is very similar to Jackson Hole, where we are going to do a best run out of three. Each woman will drop three times, have three opportunities to make it to finals. Two women will advance. And it is worth noting that behind Robin and Zoe, the third place spot was Marion Herity. 
but due to COVID travel restrictions, she was not allowed into the country. And so Hannah Beeman, for her third place finish in Jackson, took that spot. Thank you for that clarification, Travis. In the men's bracket, I mean, look at this lineup. You got or- Oregon with Ben Ferguson, BC with Chris Rassman, Oslo, Norway with Mikkel Bang, and the pride of Saskatchewan, Mark McMorris. Mary, when you look at this, this lineup, what do you see in riding styles? This is wild and also, again, very exciting because you have in each bracket a kind of video part veteran, someone that has made their home in the backcountry in Rasmund and Mikkel versus a a rider who has uh, staked their claim in contests and now has transitioned into the backcountry and is really coming out as a, a powerhouse in McMorris and Ferguson. I think to simplify this, nobody is here due to luck. And that is the beauty of this natural selection format. You earn your way in from many different angles of snowboarding. Travis, take us through this Montrachet face here in the Tudrillos. Yeah, thanks. This is such a dynamic contest venue. Up to the right, riders are calling this area the parallelogram. Now, off the main start, you have what we call the pyramid. This is where the bulk of the riding took place. Uh, Looker's right, you see it's a little bit more freestyle and friendly, and as you skew to the left, it gets to way more complicated in free ride. And I want to point out this main gully, we will reference that. 3,800 feet at the top, 2,500 at the bottom, which means there's 1,300 feet for these riders to play as we again recap uh, these semifinals. Ben Ferguson and Chris Rassman. Ben Ferguson, podiums in X Games, uh, an Olympian, and Rassman known for legendary video parts. As we take a look at Ben Ferguson, what kind of snow uh, were these riders playing with? As again, this is the first time they're hitting uh, this 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 face. Oh, well, definitely good enough for an effortless stomp here. And I want to point out, Ben is taking a more rider's right line down the face here. So believe it or not, it has not snowed for almost three weeks here. So this snow that they're riding is actually this dehydrated surface facets, not really like fresh pow. Ben Ferguson, just really one of those riders who has incredible board control that transfers somehow from a super pipe to a big old 40, (laughs) 50 footer. Wow. That was massive. Look at his kick out and just, you know, it's such a game of inches up here when you're looking for Tranny to land on. How do these riders know where they're at? Uh, it's a great question. I mean, that literally is the game here. And, you know, as we watch, you know, Rasmin taking a little bit more of a left line. I think he's going just left of that main gully in the center. Um, it's a game of memory, truly. This is creation. You put a line together in your head, and then you go up and see if you can lay it down in the physical. Rasmin, of course, getting the win at Valhalla at Baldface. Oh. Coming up just short, Mary, as he went for that gap. You know, interesting to know, too, that, you know, this is the second time that Rasmin has been at Tudrilla Mountain Lodge. The first was obviously with you, Travis, when you guys were filming for Travel Pigs, but he didn't get to ride these lines. You know, the conditions necessitated that you guys ride lower and you built a lot of jumps then. So he's back here, but for the first time, kind of. Yeah, Alaska is a different game. And Ben looks like he's taking the uh, same line as he did for his first run. Got a little washed up in that landing, but I don't think it'll hurt him too bad. Again, this was a best of three runs in the semifinals. You can just see how complicated it is looking down this whole line. And this is where Ben Ferguson's board control really shines also. I mean, you know, I I watch him doing this and I think immediately of the way that he rides Bachelor, his home mountain. Obviously, this is, wow, it just gnarlier crazier technical lines, but that same control is present. Oh, that backside 360 off that little bump was such a nice little ender. Yeah, he's the psyched judges on that like run. He. He's psyched on that run. He's building momentum. That, that one felt good. What kind of pressure for Chris Rassman now after that second run when Ben was already in the lead? Yeah, it looks like Chris is going to take the same ridge as his first line. Different exit though, and, oh, and again, that's what's so tough. All of these, all of these are on sighting errors. So this is the first time they're hitting these things. And it's it's tough to get the transitions to line up. 
That was beautiful. <laughs> Rasmin really personifies the kind of you know, meeting of big mountain riding and freestyle, I think, you know, and that's evident. And as you saw, that second run score for Ben Ferguson, a 90. So he's kind of got room to play here, but he wants to put as much distance as he can between himself uh, and Rasmin, so he's only going to try and up it. Which, I mean, beautiful improvement on it right there. A little washout, but it's, he's still got control. I want to point out, too, the gullies, the runnels of these are compromised snow. The snow is not as good in the gullies here. Why is that, Travis? Well, you know, it's a different approach than, say, you'd take in the Rocky Mountains, where here, up on the ridges, like you just saw, oh, been really psyched on stomping the three off the top there. Um, the snow stays soft, it isn't disrupted on the ridges, where the gullies constantly has sloughing and wind almost hits the gullies a little harder. So more compromised snow in the gullies. You know, and I'm curious, that, that run might have been enough to improve upon that 90. We got Rasmin coming in. I know he's hungry. Woo! What you heard there from Ben Ferguson was respect. Respect uh, for the power of Rasmin and then also he, we know that Chris won the second stop at Valhalla. I mean, this is a competition, of course, but as we've seen at the other stops at Jackson at Valhalla, you know, being in the backcountry is about collaboration. Ooh. Ooh. Travis, what happened there? Oh, uh, it looks like he just, he got hung up with the variability of snow. I mean, these takeoffs are nature made, which means <laughs> anything's possible. Three, and with that 88, Ben Ferguson is on his way to the final. Nothing but respect, of course, between these two. Uh, it was a great uh, first semifinal. Dude, and that's it. I mean, the game of risk and reward, right? I think Rasmund took a, a few risks and didn't work out for him. In Heat 2, it was Micklebang and Mark McMorris. Mark, of course, winning at Jackson Hole. Mikkel will arguably the trick of the event yeah, with that 360 yeah, you too, buddy. rock smash. As we start off with the, the tall man, Mikkel Bang. So much anticipation to watch Mikkel at this final stop here in semis. You know, he is an icon of backcountry riding and has, you know, proven his prowess in Alaska in, through so many video parts. Yeah, and so Mikkel taking a, a more rider's left uh, line approach. So he's left of Rasmund's line right here. What is it in particular that you can point out about Mikkel's style? Well, right Ooh, there. That, he's one no, of the tallest no, guys no, in the no, game. No. <laughs> I mean, you can see right here, he's, he's not holding back. And again, this is something where from the air, from the front, you know, an air like that looks like there's a landing and, and you learn as you go. He just learned that that landing's too flat and I, I don't think he's gonna try that cliff again. That was really fun, but so much bigger than, like, a lot bigger than I thought. Well, you heard him say right there, he said, that was a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> you gotta I, he's gonna go similar area to where I went. Yeah, Liam. Yeah, Scott. Yeah, so here in that, um, again, there's that main gully that we referenced, so he's going to be Ryder's left side of this pyramid venue. And you see, I mean, he's he's riding the spine down, where Mikkel was riding in the gully to the right. What does it take to navigate those spine sections that are so exposed with so little option on your left or right side? It, just experience and full confidence. You cannot ride that stuff without total confidence. Oh, it gets a little hung up there. But, I mean, you see it from that beautiful follow drone angle. It, you can't see over that. So you have to know and be confident that what is on the other side, you know, that you know, you've done the homework. middle of your run is not the place to decide, like, I don't know if I really want to be here. So I think both these guys are obviously trying to improve upon their run. 
and looks like Mikkel's taking a new line here. Little back seat, but it's a beautiful cliff. Now, like Mark Morris, you know, over a decade ago, Mikkel also started in the competition circuit. I mean, he's won the U.S. Open slope style. He's competed in X Games. He has medals. But he really uh, transitioned fully into the backcountry um, after that. And here we are. <laughs> and there you see his trademark style on that backside 360. I mean, Mikkel Bang is a snowboarder who has been known to the world in this community since he was about 12 years old and only continues to build his name. Much the same with Mark McMorris, you know, who, what this kid, what this kid has done in slope style courses alone is like, you don't need to do anything else, but Travis, you know better than anyone, what has fueled Mark's desire to take it to this place? Well, it's a good point. I mean, I think, you know, he's done about everything there is to do. Ooh. And wow. not just getting a little away from him, but great line. Stepping up on what he did last run. This was that back three, back set. I mean, they're going to give him some points for that. But, you know, I think Mark um, being really interested in all components of riding has really found pleasure in, in taking his riding and skill to this type of terrain. And you could see that in, the, in that run, that ability to, to bring some of that slope style prowess into this big, massive range. And those nerves of steel. I mean, he is a ironclad competitor, and I'm sure that's helping him when navigating this terrain. Mikkel Bang in the lead after that first run. Little rock tap. Yep, looking to build upon what he did last run. Is there a little bit more confidence in revisiting that same area where you began? 100%. Um, yeah, once you, you know, once you lay a line down, a new line, you, you know, you have that knowledge in your head. And oftentimes that is what riders are trying to, you know, build upon. Damn it. And yeah, it was, it's interesting. Oh. You know, I think Mikkel kind of left the door open. Well, there you go. I mean, you could tell he, he got thrown off his line at the bottom and that's frustrating because he knows I, I can't, I have to be as perfect as possible when I'm going up against Mark. Oh, and he smells blood right here. Yeah, you can never discount Mark. He will come through in the clutch. He is a uh, last run competitor. Doesn't stop until it's over. That's interesting, him stopping and looking left right there. I, uh, I think he might not be where he wants to be. I mean, and that's interesting too, because I mean, Travis, how much time did they have to kind of do recon to look at this before they dropped in? Um, you know, only about 24 hours. They got a look and this was where Rasmin went and oh my God. Wow, what? that was enormous. Oh. Talk about a double tap. Oh my God. I do not think that was intentional. No. Oh, I got one. Wow. How I far did he bounce there, Travis? <laughs> I mean, I think he bounced a solid 50, 60 feet. Uh, I, I, I didn't go left enough. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah, I thought I had made it far enough over. My God. Yeah, he knows it. He knows he didn't convert That's on it. the opportunity. No more tries at that. Jeez Louise. How'd it go for you, Meat? Uh, my leg. Yeah, uh, like cramped up. I, yeah, I, I was going towards the last hit, and I like my my leg couldn't take the 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 pressure, so I just did like a flail straight air. Uh. Run three, Mickle Bang, 68. It wasn't the prettiest, but he'll take it. Mickle Bang with that highest score of the three runs will move on to the final and Mark McMorris will face Chris Rassman in that consolation battle for the third spot on the podium. The women's semifinals were the legend Hannah Beeman, Robin Van Jena, who won the second stop at uh, Bald Face Valhalla and young Zoe Sadowski Sanat, the winner of our first stop uh, at Jackson Hole, which was incredible as a wild card. And we started off uh, with Hannah, who we see walking towards her line, Travis. Uh, yeah, it looks like she's opting to go over to the parallelogram. No one's been over here yet. 
little a little more straightforward, yeah, but a there. lot of opportunity on this side of the venue. Three, two, one, dropping. Hannah is really known for her power and prowess when she's riding in the backcountry. We saw this definitely at Jackson, and right now even her first turns through that little gully area, um, you know, she just is all all smooth, all style. Yeah, the snow looks so good over here. And you can see, you know, when it's sloughing, you know the snow is high grade. And how do you use uh, that, that, that sloughing snow as a rider in, in your run? Well, you know, playing with your slough is, is definitely a skill and it's intentional. Um, I think where you see an experience come in is when a rider gets swept or taken by their slough. I mean, it looks to me like that was a great first run for her to just get, you know, a run down, something under the belt, and I definitely anticipate we're going to see her try to improve upon that. Robin Van Jin you know, just was disappointed with her performance at Jackson Hole and the way she went home to Canada and just stepped up to the plate with the win at Ball Pace Valhalla. You know she is excited for this opportunity here in the Tudrillos. And taking that technical route right away. Getting a little back seated off that. So this is the same line that uh, Mark McMorris took a uh, majority of his runs. Wow, well, that was more technical than I thought. <laughs> it's interesting too, I mean, hearing the sounds of uh, Robin and everyone riding, there's a lot of physical effort. It's very demanding riding these faces. I mean, it's, you know, this is, uh, this is an intense athletic effort. Yeah, you heard Robin say, you know, that, that was more technical than I thought. Speaking of technical, so Zoe opting for the little more complicated rider's right side of the run, and I mean, come on, you know, she just stomped that like, uh, like it was nothing. So we're watching right now Zoe's first foray in Alaska, correct? Like this is her, her, first, her first go at these mountains? Absolutely, her first trip, and you can see her, she's doing a great job managing the slough. You can see the slough pouring down the gully. If you guys are DVRing this, if those still exist right now, save this run, because this is going to be uh, historical as we watch her career unfold. Can I get an NFT of this? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well played. Oh, my God. <laughs> Incredible that this young woman could come to Tordrillo Mountain Lodge fresh off of a win in slope style at the World Championships and put down that first run, first place with an 88. I love hearing her so psyched. Oh. Amping. So I think, uh, you know, the first, the first run for all three of these ladies was an establishment. And, you know, it, they're setting a precedent that I think all three of them obviously are going to try to improve upon. And for run two, we see Hana back at the top of the parallelogram and dropping in, kind of picking her way down the top of this zone. I mean, this is another example of, of getting kind of caught in the slough right there of, you know, what it's the difference between looking at your line when you're on hill versus trying to judge that from the bottom and uh, knowing that terrain. You heard that rock tap underneath the snow there at the top. Travis, what did you think of that this, this approach? Well, you know, Hannah's making bigger turns. She looks a little more confident than her first run. And here is the payoff, which, you know, oh, maybe she's... There we go. She definitely improved upon her last run, but you know, frankly, I think she's gonna have to open it up a little bit more if she wants to catch Robin and Zoe. You could see that in her body language as she came into the finish. Robin on her second run. Yeah, looking back at the top of the pyramid again, going to the rider's left of that main gully and solid entrance into this last little spine.
Travis, you spent a lot of time riding with Robin when you guys were filming um, for Death Perception. And, uh, you know, one thing that always impresses me is, well, awesome method, is yeah. that, you know, she always is kind of really pushing herself, it looks like. Is yeah. that your experience? in person riding with her? Yeah, I think what what we just saw right there is, um, you know, she is putting it a little bit more on the line. She's taking bigger risks, um, bigger drops, and I, I think she knows that she can't play it safe, especially with this young woman going back again to the right here. And, I mean, it's a solid, you know, that's that's bigger than I think anything Robin did on her, her last run. Zoe's really fearless, and it's incredible watching her first, you know, dip her toes into Alaska, but I guess, I mean, I should say she's really just jumping completely in. I mean, that is a giant drop right there. Yeah, and you don't stomp the, those types of drops without a level of confidence. You know, there's not an air or thought in her head if I'm going to land it. She's already looking ahead, assuming that she's going to land it. It's a big difference. And I love the, the way she really commanded control in that belly section, you know, big, fast, strong turns. And you could hear her confidence. Yeah, and you know, it's little moves <laughs> like that. Like that is what is going to up her score, taking chances. Taking chances and audibly having all of the fun. I took the first hit. Strong score of an 86, Wait, but her first one. run, still oh. the top getter as we head into this third and final run. Damn, you are smoking us. You know, I think this brings up the discussion again that we've had at every iteration of the tour so far is, you know, how much does experience come into play? You know, Zoe's first time in Alaska, and she is leading two runs against two women that have spent a lot of time in the backcountry and in AK. And, you know, by the looks of where Han is going right now, I mean, she knows it. She's She knows she has to change it up. And so this is her first exploit, and that is not going to help her cause. But looks like she's gone to the farthest right ridge, so no one's been this far right, and this is where it's real technical free riding. Uh -oh. It's so interesting, you know, comparing this to a video part, like getting to see that moment of her taking a beat to look at where she's going. I mean, this is, this is something that we don't ever get to see as viewers. Yeah, and this approach, I mean, it's slow and technical, but does this route finding have fireworks? Is there a reason for it? Muscles that landing, and then she came in here with this gorgeous backside hack. What is that, that mental state when you are trying to pick a line in such a critical area? You know, I, I think it really comes down to how well do you have the route in your head? And, you know, to be honest, I think I think Hana was was not totally comfortable where she was. You know, she she, she was taking time to onside and look where she was going. And that's going to not help her score. And you see the contrast in styles in real time in this last run uh, with Robin. Just a little bit more surety in direction and where she's going. Saving it getting a little hung up on the front foot. A little too much pressure on the front foot. Wow, heading to a big drop. Doesn't quite put it down, but it's really still impressive just watching Robin go for it. <laughs> oh, perfect. A little backy. Huck the backy, why don't you? She's gonna be psyched to end it on a positive note, but I don't think she's gonna love, love that note. Did Hana perhaps have enough to, to, to overtake Robin? She had a solid cliff at the bottom. Cliff to turn combo was real nice, but I mean, you know, Zoe's sitting pretty. I mean, she's, I think she's gonna try to improve upon, you know, what she's done. She's taken the same line as before and, 
Oh my God! Stop. What? Just the upstart <laughs> from uh, from Down Under. I don't can Down Under apply to New Zealand? <laughs> and coming into that backside three on the toes. Yes. Wow. And I love the mics. You know, you could hear her psyching herself up for it. I mean, this is crazy watching her ride. Like, this is her first time here. I know I keep saying that, but I, we cannot dismiss the fact with how kind of uh, much she's charging, despite the fact that this is not terrain that she's familiar with at all. Yeah, I mean, she's she's New Zealander, so you know there is some incredible terrain uh, in New Zealand. There's a lot of incredible backcountry in New Zealand, being a small island and so coastal. Um, you know, we sometimes refer to it when it does have good conditions as Little Alaska. That explains things a little bit then. <laughs> yeah, it still it still doesn't fully prepare you for just the grandioseness of the scale up here. Everything is bigger than you think it is. Wow. <laughs> I mean, this kid is just not afraid. Look at her landings from that three, just there, that cliff drop. I mean, she has no problem landing in this deeper snow, and that is a skill all in itself. I mean, she's coming from, like you said, Salema, the world champs on, of slope style, where you're learning groomed runs, and it's a totally different thing to be landing in powder like this, and she has no problem. Hana with an 80 on her last run. Not enough to take out Robin, though. Zoe with that 92 showing us a glimpse at the future as she and Robin will move on, but Hannah, a well-deserved third place. She earned it. As we are set for our finals, Ben Ferguson and Mikkel Bang. Ha! That's gonna be amazing. And battling for third as well, Chris Rassman versus Mark McMorris. And Travis, that's gonna be just as much of a battle as the final. I mean, these are both final bouts here. And, you know, throw some insights here. I mean, this is what Chris Rasman does. This is the type of writing that he's been so dominant at. Uh, I, I gotta think that this is gonna play towards his skills. And then between Ben and Mikkel, I mean, Ben has been charging so hard this year. And Mikkel just came off a month, uh, more or less on the couch in Oslo. And in the women's final, Robin Van Jin and Zoe sadowski sanat literally like backcountry queen in Robin Van Jin and Zoe sadowski sanat who's announced this year, I am here to play. And we are coming full circle, completely all the way back to the first stop at Jackson Hole when these two went head to head in the very first round and Robin was knocked off by the young up and comer from New Zealand. So here it's like, What's going to play out? I, you know, it could go either way with these two women. An amazing segue, Mary, because we're going to take a look at the highlights from that first stop in Jackson Hole presented by Burton. Yes. Of the 24 riders who were invited to Jackson, five of them were Burton riders, and four of those five got a ticket to Alaska. Yeah, it looks so cool. So we got There's Mikkel, incredibly experienced in the back. Country. I was up against Mark. My approach was kind of to do something a little bit different. Oh. No one is taking that line. Went for it the second time. Oh, and he holds it. on to it. Yes. Luckily, he got, got it going. It's really big, yeah. Mark McMorris, one of the most solid competitors maybe of this generation. I was up against Travis. Everyone was pretty much RIP Mark. If you're dropping after Travis Rice in his home court, that is pressure. I rose to the occasion and beat him in that head-to-head. -head. Mark McMorris, your champion! Winning in Jackson was a massive career highlight. Maybe it'll burn off and we get to go. No. Ben Ferg coming from the half pipe side of things, really kind of blowing minds with his ability to take that edge control into the backcountry. I was super nervous, didn't know what I was gonna do. Ben is on one today. He came with a different mentality. I ended up doing really good. I got second in the event and I qualified to come up here. Good riding. That was so fun. On the women's side, we had Zoe and Marion getting the tap to come up to Alaska. Unfortunately, Marion wasn't able to make it due to some new border restrictions, so Hana got a ticket to Alaska. 
I qualified to come to Alaska because I got third place in the Jackson event. Huge oh, wildcat. Beautiful landing. Marion, I'm like so bummed for her that she couldn't make it, but I'm also so stoked for myself that I get to come up and be a part of the Alaska event. Whoever's in charge, can we do some quiet runs? I mean, Zoe honestly came out of nowhere. She originally didn't even have an invite. Yeah, I hadn't really had much experience in the backcountry or anything. It was domination from start to finish. Your champion, Zoe sandowski -Sinnoh. Pretty crazy that I ended up winning it. It's just a dream come true to ride with my favorite snowboarders. I mean, I cut my teeth at Burton. I worked there for 13 years. I worked for Jake, and Jake would have loved this. And he wouldn't have loved it just because Burton riders did well, although he for sure would have been super hyped on that because he was himself very competitive. But Jake loved snowboarding and he loved growing the sport. Yeah, I mean, rest in peace, Jake. He would have loved natural selection. From that first stop at Jackson Hole, we were able to bring three men and two women. But our second stop, at Bald Face Valhalla in British Columbia was a different format, one that was necessary to pivot in the time of COVID as we were able to add one more man and one more woman to this final dance. 10 riders, six men and four women, all members of esteemed Canadian backcountry royalty gathered at Bald Face Valhalla. And look, you know, these riders are veterans of the video part and essentially that's what this was. It was a video contest held in what I think is one of the greatest untapped tenures in BC, and it was an even playing field. Nobody had ridden this area. And if Jackson Hole was fully controlled with built jumps, this was uh, an upgrade, if you will, on the road to Alaska. Yes, as you can see, like the riders are given more of that line selection situation at this event, and it was challenging. This is a very treat alpine. As you can see, Bo Bishop right there experiencing that. And Chris Rasman, of course, emerged victorious, edging out Dustin Craven in second and Mark Sellers in third to take the W. The riders there for one week, 70% of the score coming from a prepared run, the other 30% from an edit. Robin Van Jin just edging out Leanne Pelosi, and you can see both she and Chris stoked to get the call here to Alaska. One of my favorite things about natural selection is that adaptability is required as a snowboarder. And you see that in all of the terrain that we've had so far. First, Jackson Hole set up, and then Bald Face. And then you come here and you're like, whoa, this is next level. Yeah, I mean, look, this, there's a reason that this tour culminates in Alaska. The terrain up here is just on another level of scale. Um, part of what makes it so incredible is not just the geology of the area, but also the fact that there is a higher percentage of moisture in the snow, and that's why it sticks on these vertical faces. Alaska, the last frontier, a place of science and fiction, where the only limitation is a lack of imagination. Sixty million years ago, this area was an ancient seafloor. As the forces of plate tectonics have sent continents crashing together, the land has only had one place to go, up. Here in Alaska, the boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate is the driving force behind both the Aleutian Island chain and a majority of the state's largest mountain ranges. Vast monoliths of granite and igneous rock that host many of the tallest peaks in North America. Carved out by glaciers and blanketed by some of the most consistent snowfall on the planet. Nestled in the heart of this vast wilderness is the one and only Tordrillo Mountain Lodge. A short flight from here leads to the legendary range from which the lodge takes its name boasting over 1.2 million acres of rideable terrain, the Tordrillos are by any standard as good as it gets. The range is a primary beneficiary of a phenomenon known as the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, 
a semi-permanent low pressure system called the Aleutian Low collides with the polar jet stream and creates a recurring pattern of climate variability. In simpler terms, it means the Tordrillos are constantly bombarded by storms and receive over 600 inches of snow annually. An infinite amount of converging factors make Alaska the most challenging and rewarding location on the planet to push the limits of snowboarding. A billion years of geological history is compressed into decisions made by the millisecond. While timeless and unchangeable forces have all led to the present, it is the actions we take in this moment that shape the future. It is undeniable that this is one of the most beautiful places on earth to host a snowboard event. However, underneath that beauty lies an ever-present danger. Luckily, all of our riders are covered by spot insurance were anything to happen, and every single precaution is being taken in order to host natural selection safely. Check out this short clip that explains all of the precautions that are being taken to put on this event safely, presented by Backcountry. Being a backcountry snowboarder, obviously a huge part of your success is uh, safety and teamwork and everyone in your crew being on it. When you're dealing with Alaska, it's a whole different level of exposure. If you fall, you're falling like way longer than you would fall anywhere else. Everything is supersized in Alaska. There are precautions that need to be taken that, that aren't like anywhere else in the world. So with an operation like we run here in the Tordrillo Mountains, everyone who participates, whether you're a professional athlete or one of our guests, you've got a safety responsibility. The key response in any avalanche event is peer rescue. The people around you are the ones that are going to save your ass. Obviously, all guests and competitors are prepared with the equipment that they need to respond to any emergency. Probe and shovel, transceiver, obviously. Avalanche transceivers are so that if, if I get buried, I'm giving off a signal that my partners can then find me with their same device. The first main thing that would be different from something I would regularly use in BC is a harness. You cannot go heli snowboarding in Alaska without a harness. Then the unlikely event of someone falling through a Bergschrund or a crevasse We've got a really easy, quick response for those people. Having that harness on just takes out a whole sort of time element that you might otherwise have. And we add to that a mandatory requirement that everyone wears a, an avalanche airbag of some kind. The Arva vest that we provided for all the riders, obviously a little different than the vest that they rode in in BC and AK, a little more functional, full airbag built into the vest. An avalanche airbag is essentially a balloon that pops out of your backpack when you pull the trigger. The airbag makes you bigger than all the chunks around you. It also protects your head and your neck. That greater surface area, one, it does keep you on top of the avalanche debris, and secondly, it provides a bigger target area in a search so that you've got a greater chance of being found. As amazing as airbags are at saving lives, the idea is you never want to have to use them. You still need to apply your same rules. You still need to dig pits. You still need to do snow checks. For natural selection, for example, we, we completed both slope testing with snow pits and profiles. We're looking for weak layers. Weak layers are usually formed during dry periods. So you're looking for these layers in the snowpack that could fail when you put a person on them or when they hit the right spot. As we came into the final sort of event window, we were really lucky to be facing some well-settled snow, snow that was adhering well on steeper slopes. The one thing, though, that we are dealing with, because it's Alaska and it's steep terrain, is loose dry or slough. Like, as a rider, you have to be aware that every time you turn, you're kicking loose snow down the mountain. And if you cut back under that snow or get too much of it moving, even though it's not an avalanche, it'll still take you out. Are you good? Give us a hands up. There's a lot more that can go wrong up here, but if it's done right and the safety is at that next level, like they have here at Tordrilla Mountain Lodge, the reward is tenfold. It's just the most incredible snowboarding experience that you can have.
The mountains in the Tordrillo range are so much bigger in person. And this face that we've picked out for our finals venue, it's steep, it's deep, and it is littered with features. We want you to see exactly what it's like to rip this face for yourself. Check out our GoPro course preview. Thank you, Tom. Travis, what makes this particular face special for this final? Well, you know, this is a incredible venue as you can see how contained it is. Also the variability of these big ridges, spines that roll down, they, they give so many different opportunities and different ways of riding as you see it kind of funnels into this main prominent ridge here and if you see those heli skid marks right there on that piece i mean just to give you some perspective um the guides landed on that thinking that that was too big of a cliff for a rider to actually drop uh and you know going into this event i mean we spent years identifying the best venues in this area we have five or six of them and while this venue isn't my favorite finals venue um, I think that this year conditions just pointed us right into this space. You can see how good it looks and how well it's formed up this year. It is a beautiful finals day in the Tordrillo Mountain Lodge neighborhood. Blue skies, 11 degrees. Travis, what do these numbers mean to you uh, on a day like today? I mean, honestly, it's prime conditions. 78% humidity because of the proximity to the ocean. Simply put, I would call these conditions bluebird, or in the terminology, my late dear friend Greg Harms, splitter. The men are up first for finals today, and we have two head-to-head -head matchups with four riders, a finals bracket and a consolation bracket. Three runs per rider, highest score wins each heat. And with third place decided with the women, it is just one battle. Best of three runs, hoping to see some scores knocking on the door of that 100 range. For those of you that watched us in Jackson, the judging criteria will be the same for today's finals. And Dave is back. Difficulty, amplitude, variety, and execution. We are looking for the full appraisal of each run. We wanna see how the riders go from top to bottom, all in all. To simplify it, the best snowboarding will take today. It is go time here in the sunrise as we're about to see first tracks on this DFC face, two Canadians, Chris Rassman versus Mark McMorris, battling for that third spot. And with Chris Rassman, you have a veteran of the Whistler backcountry, but even for him with all this experience, this Alaskan terrain presents a uniquely intimidating challenge. I still have definitely not mastered mentally preparing for riding in Alaska. When we first got to fly over Montaché and DFC, and it's like, okay, this looks pretty sick. Some playful hits from the heli. And then we got set off on the Barbie angle and we were looking straight across and I was like, okay, <laughs> it's bad boy shit. Here we go, these lines are big. <laughs> this place is just beautifully frightening, to be honest. I've dedicated my entire life to backcountry snowboarding. Seeing a bit of the spotlight get taken off of slope style, half pipe, and Olympics, and getting Sean onto the genre that I chose is really special to me. And I want to see this tour succeed, and I hope I can be competing in it for years to come. 2021 natural selection. Rasmin, the guinea Lodge. pig. It is no small task first to drop first three, and set the pace, two, one, set the tone. Drop. Oh, look at the light. Few better to drop in first than Chris Rasman. God, the conditions look stellar. Gorgeous backside 360 to start things off. And you just see right off the bat that speed and power that Rasman is known for. This may be a far cry from BC, but watching Rasman ride here, he is in his element. He is definitely combining the fluidity of these turns and terrain navigation with his penchant for freestyle. Like, it's, it's uncanny with him. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, I mean, that drop alone, like, that's veteran status, knowing exactly where the hazards are.
Well, if that doesn't look like a dream run right there, I don't know what does. Talk about a breakfast run as you see the sun coming up over the range and Grassman letting it fly with joy, just pointing it down to the bottom. <laughs> that is a joy-filled straight line right there. Uh, Rasman's got to be so psyched to lay one down clean. And I'm telling you, he just took a immense amount of weight off of every single rider up there at the top with anxiety of what snow conditions are going to be like, how's the course going to ride, and watching him just grease that. Holy Hannah, what a rush. crazy when it all works out for the most part. A couple of stiff 7 a.m. grabs, little, little stink bug, but that's okay. Got it down. Yeah, I can get something smoother next time. We got a radio comms for riders. I can talk to them. <laughs> First one down and already wanting to talk to his peers up at top. Thank you. You know, he's probably, I would think, going to give them an Radio's update on conditions since he was the first to touch snow. It's that camaraderie that makes this so unique. Gosh. Snow is super rippable. Um, it's still a little bit variable, but I would say like more than twice as good as the semifinals day. The power is good. There's really not any fluff moving, at least where I rode, which is awesome. Um, watch out as you get three quarters down the run. The fluff runnels get a little bumpy but they still have soft snow on top, so just it tips up and you'll be good to go. Have fun. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Chris. That was awesome. Thank you. While we are looking to crown winners here today, everyone getting home safely, uh, that is the big win, and Rasman playing his part for his fellow competitors. Mark McMorris, he is comfortable in a park, but what's his mindset standing on the ridgeline here in Alaska? Alaska is just a lot grander in most places you ride. You're not gonna touch the slope you're gonna compete on. You can only look and take photos and study as best you can. A real challenge I've come to find. It's absolutely unbelievable and this is the holy grail of big mountain snowboarding. What's gonna get rewarded is smooth riding and staying on your feet. Not necessarily going for the most technical things all the time, but riding the course smooth and um, having good flow and creativity. That's what I'd like to bring to AK, and that's always kind of the case. I just want to ride smooth and have good style and make it look effortless. Come on, Sparky. Yeah, I mean, he, he hits the nail right on the head. You know, it's about visualization. But the bonus component is, you know, you put a line together in your head. And it never goes one, perfect. One, it's about three, how these riders two, adapt one, to it, the changes and things that don't go perfect. That's that's really what I think is going to crown the winner of this this event. I love that that perspective. It's like you can have a plan, but the mountain doesn't really care about your plan. Getting a little hung up, but I mean, come on, this is a dreamy powder park. Yeah, the snow looks amazing right now. And, uh, I mean, gosh. Oh, straight double steps that. Again, you, you see, it's, uh, it's really good snow conditions, but it is variable. And I think you're seeing the same thing here as you did in the semis day, where, you know, conditions are really good on the ridges. And down in the lower areas where there's been sloughs, it's disrupted the surface now. Travis, that's that feature you pointed <laughs> out during the, wow, that uh, was a, a no-fly zone, correct? <laughs> exactly. I love that he just, he saw that the, 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 the heli skids is like, yeah, I'm gonna use that to punt off. <laughs> uh, I oh. mean, to the moon, that's classic Alaska. You know, you think something is a certain size, you, you go off of it, there's no trees to give you any type of perspective and, I mean, that was a massive, massive drop. It is that best run of three. So for Rasman and Nick Morris, got the morning, the morning wiggles out of the way. At first glance, who are you giving the, that first run to? Oh, I mean, Rasman just completely greased his run. Uh, he's psyched. I know that he's got more in the tank 
So he's really building off some momentum. You know, Sparky here, after that massive freaking error, I think he's probably going to recalibrate a little bit on his uh, his next line. Yeah, lay back. Well, let's have a recap of these first runs. Chris Rasman, he said a couple of stiff 7 a.m. grabs, Mary. Yeah, you know, judging by watching, though, I wouldn't tell that he wasn't fully uh, fully ready to drop in. He opened up the course so nicely. Gosh, looking at that POV angle just really gives me the jitters. <laughs> Beautiful run by Chris Rasman. Yeah, he's on point. I mean, when you see riders hit tranny and it doesn't even look like they have to, you know, take an impact, uh, th that's mastery. Rasmund really making the man voice proud. And of course, fellow Canadian Mark McMorris. I mean, making it look kind of easy up at top right here. And then he went for uh, the this no fly massive cliff. Chris Rasman getting a 75 to Mark McMorris's 70. Did you, either of you think the gap would be that close? Um, yeah, I, I actually didn't think it was going to be that close, but, you know, in hindsight, you know, McMorris fit in another error. I think he had one more key feature than Rasman, and Rasman's was butter, but he can definitely build upon it. And from there, we go straight into our first run of the final with Mickle Bang taking that full speed, go big approach that has wild snowboarding for decades. Getting ready for this event, like mentally, um, my strategy has been to look at it like I'm just out here filming. That's just my way of doing it. I kind of ignore the whole uh, contest aspect and then I just try and focus on the snowboarding side of it and just try and have fun, really. Riding against Ben is awesome. You know, he's he's currently like my my favorite rider nowadays, you know, so it's like, and 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 a good friend. So, and I, I know he's just, he's such a good free rider. rider. And we, we have a little, little, little different approach on like Big Mountain. So, so it'll be interesting to see what he does. To win this event and the Bronco would just be unreal, you know. Just being a part of this and uh, being among all these incredible riders and taking taking the win would be be the icing on the cake. All right. Bang, <laughs> and while three, it's two, definitely been a while one, since he's donned drop. a bib, do Get not let him fool somebody. you. He is a veteran competitor. Multiple X Games slope style medal winner. As we said before, he has been making his mark in snowboarding since he was 11, 12 years old. He looks ready. Beautiful, yeah, he, he, he read that transition a lot better than, uh, than Mark. I mean, Mikkel really is at home in this type of terrain. He just, his eye for navigation and finding the line that he wants to ride and that really complements his style is um, incredible. Yes, the gap. He's, what he just did, that, that is something that I love. I have the most respect for when you do any type of gap riding and, and catch a tranny. I love that approach. Wow. How about Gorgeous. the window for that very tight window in that landing of that backside 360? Yeah, preci precision. You know, for not having ever ridden this area before, he he makes this look almost easy, and I know that it's really not. It's just, it's so impressive. He's such a fluid rider. And again, uh, you know, he's he's psyched right now. Riding, riding this out after, you know, greasing a first run. I, I think that's really where, you know, competitors feel the freedom to start a build upon each run. And it is most snowboarders dream to be able to ride that gorgeously in their regular stance, let alone deciding to come in switch because your back leg is sore. And everyone is so stoked at the bottom. Thanks, guys. 
I'm so stoked sitting here. So many years going into this, and these guys getting the conditions they have right now. Well, Ben Ferguson is one of those riders who has redefined free riding, but defining a plan to conquer these mountains has required a think big approach and a whole lot of patience. Anytime you're in Alaska, the size of the mountains is just like awe-inspiring, kind of makes you pucker up a little bit. You're like, oh boy, here we go, we're in Alaska. It's definitely like kind of hard to pick out a line. Like I was stressing a little bit and then not really till like the last second when we were taking that heli up, fully like nailed down what I wanted to try. I honestly think I would be more hyped on winning this than like say winning even the Olympics, honestly, like this is cooler to me, I think by far. You know, this is like the next evolution, I feel like, and hopefully this continues on. So I think this is something really cool to be a part of from the get-go. Get it, Ben. Have fun, buddy. And that is a statement made by an actual Olympian. Not someone who, like, well, I didn't get invited to the dance, but I, I want to sound cool. Like, that's, that's an actual Olympian making that statement. That's pretty incredible. That's got to feel pretty amazing to hear, Travis. <laughs> Oh, I'm on cloud nine right now. Look at this. And look at that. Oh, oh. gosh. Classic Ferguson. Cloud meth. That was gorgeous. You know, the thing about Ben is even when he's riding in the half pipe, which is, you know, um, a more traditional area, you're going back and forth, back and forth. He has always put his own spin on it. Oh, wow. You know, and it just speaks to his board control and his inherent style. Oh, my goodness. Oh, heartbreaker right there. Yeah, tough to tell. I mean, either there's some subpar snow down there, right there in the gully, or he just was a little bit off access and landed a little bit in the backseat. He's not done. Yeah, he is a man who knows how to turn his snowboard. Yeah, it's like, if you're wondering why we're so silent, when you're watching perfectly drawn out turns <laughs> at these speeds on a mountain like this, you just can't help but watch and be like, wow. It's a thing of beauty. Yeah, and it's a beauty of this format. Uh, you know, best of three runs, so. He's definitely going to take the momentum he had up top and bring it to his crazy. second run. Nice job, doggy. Hell yeah, Ben. Yes, sir. Nice job, nice job. Nice job. Nice job. Mutual admiration festival of four as we head into the Yeti recap. Mickle Bang. He was feeling it right from the get go. You know, and I really like uh, this run, you know, aside from the obvious uh, touch point features here, his his lines, you know, he's drawing these like 500 foot radius turns between features. There's a lot of fluidity. This is a veteran take on this slope. I mean, it's like I said before, he looks really at home. And of course, Ben dropping in and ready to put it all out on the table as well. and come out with that classic Ferguson rudder arm and a beautiful method. Yeah, let's see that again. Yeah, the manner in which he just attacked the top half of the course. Catch and tranny, that's what I like to see. I think he was just a little off axis on that. Snow still looked pretty good. Run one. Well, this first run is definitely Mickles. It's just a matter of the number, which is an 80. And Ben Ferguson's got some work to do. You know, that is significant daylight between the two riders. Um, Mickel's got to feel pretty good about that, of course, owing to Ben's fall. But I think additionally, the way that Mickel rode the face and kind of really utilized the terrain, I'm sure, you know, worked up his score a bit. And you see Ben just looking right up top and taking pictures for what he would like to do in that second run. Snowboarding's core brands have been crucial to helping us reach the heights of this sport and where we're seeing it today at Natural Selection. Natural Selection Industry Alliance is a collective of 
brands that are endemic to the world of snowboarding. Partners such as Oakley, Quicksilver, LipTech, Union Binding, Burton. These are brands that have supported these riders throughout the years and funded a lot of the content that you see and we all enjoy. And so we really wanted to create this platform that would engage these brands, highlighting them on the broadcast, really recognize them as, you know, how important they are to the industry and supporting this tour. It is imperative that we have and the athletes have the support of the industry. We really felt like the best way for us to do that was to create value. And it's part of our value system at Natural Selection to make sure that there is always a place for the industry and industry-based core brands to participate and hopefully benefit from what we're doing on a broader platform. And the door has been held open by the men for our women's final. And what an incredible matchup between 35-year-old Robin Van Jin and Zoe Sadowski Sanat, just 20 years of age. And Robin riding a wave of opportunity, getting a second chance on her home mountain to get here to Alaska. So in Jackson Hole, I was actually eliminated. Um, and basically any international athletes couldn't come into Canada and they had this Canadian event all teed up. So I kind of got a second chance to compete there, uh, which was an insane opportunity and obviously not how the tour will normally run, but um, really, really stoked I got that opportunity to, to qualify and ended up winning that event and here I am. Backcountry snowboarding is something that I've dedicated my life to because I love it so much and I can't even imagine winning. It would be the highlight of my career. And for the record, the women were given the choice on if they wanted to drop first or second, and they both decided they wanted to see a few lines go down. Robin Van Jin, you get in how you fit in, riding high off of that win in Canada. Starting things off with a substantial half gab to make her announcement, Mary, that she is, she's ready. That was killer. You know, I love watching Robin ride. She just, you know, sends it. She, and you can tell that she's having a good time. You know, she's kicking off this heavy rematch between her and Zoe uh, very strong. Yeah, seeing her psyching herself up, up top. And, you know, you can see it's, it is variable, but it is really good snow. Uh, you know, some slight sloughing, teeing this up. She's not going to be too psyched on that method, um, but there's a lot of course left. And two more runs also, but I'm sure after the semifinals performance that Zoe put down, I'm sure Robin's feeling the pressure to perform. Oh, she's eyeing this up. Oh. Ooh. She is, you know, she's, uh, the beauty of Robin too is, is she's so uh, inherently critical and she's going to make fun of herself for that. And the GoPro footage will probably be pretty fun to watch. It's tough. I mean, natural takeoffs. I mean, that at the end of the day is what makes this such a, you know, full spectrum challenge. Ooh. And that right there, I mean, seeing the chunks toss up after her little tomahawk, you know, she's in some variable snow over on this side of the course. You can see that it's, uh, we call that windboard. And when you, you describe that variable snow, how does that affect you in the moment when suddenly, like, oh, the snow is different? I mean, it's straight, it's instant feedback. And, you know, these guys are so proficient and so experienced that when literally the nerves of the feet feel the density change in the snow, um, it's almost kind of a flow state thing where the body reacts almost before you have time to think about it. You can see, oh, you hear it right there, see in her body language, that was not the run that Robin wanted, but that is, you know, part of what makes this three-run format great is that she has two more opportunities to go up and uh, get something she's more stoked on. Started off strong. Yes, it did. And there you see the snow leaking out the goggles, probably a combination of the backflip and that tomahawk. 20 years old, Zoe Sadowski Sanat is a snowboarding global phenom, but that Olympic bronze medal does not prepare you for the challenge of shredding Alaska.
oh, I was so scared when I first saw the face because, yeah, I've I've never ridden anything like it and we hadn't even gone for any runs yet. So I was just looking at it like, how do I get down that? Preparing for this is a whole lot different to preparing for a slope style event. For a slope style event, I've ridden the course uh, tens to maybe a hundred times and I know exactly what I'm going to do. I've practiced the tricks over and over again. But coming here, it's my first time down the face. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to verse Robin again, especially in in Alaska, just because she has so much experience riding this kind of terrain. And it's pretty awesome asking her for tips. I'm learning so much. And uh, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> and I'm excited too, especially after seeing her domination on Semi's Day. Yeah, and, and uh, her domination in Jackson Hole. I mean, no one expected her to beat Robin Van Jin, and everyone was like, oh, Zoe Sadowski not knows how to ride. She came in as, as a wild card, and everyone was like, oh, I guess she knows how to ride this too. And now here we are in Alaska, probably some nerves there on that entry. Um, but this is exciting because essentially she's going against Robin in her home turf. Totally. And I think if there's someone that can rise to that challenge and rise to that occasion, it is Zoe. I mean, she's one of the most exciting riders to watch, you know, based on this experience in natural selection this year. Um, male or female, she is so, like so exciting. And, you know, watching her take this line down, she definitely has ridden over some comp compromised snow conditions. You see those rugged kind of windblown areas. You, you know, you can assume that the snow's not going to be that good, but uh, catching Tranny, um, she's fine in flow. Perfect touchdown right there. Yeah, Travis, I mean, her ability to, to muscle through all of this terrain and make it look untracked is impressive. Yeah, beautiful little tail clutch. Her riding coming down the face too is also very playful. Like she's kind of like, you know, finding each and every hit, even the smaller ones, you know, which is just, it just looks like she's having fun. Yeah, she's magnetically drawn to features. <laughs> and I, I appreciate, a, I appreciate a that about her riding. Great way to put it. Well, you heard Mickle Bang earlier com complaining about uh, the leg burn. And I'm just going to assume that maybe Zoe's got a little advantage at 20. It maybe maybe the leg burn doesn't come in to play due to youth. I mean, she looks psyched, you know, the, the bobble up top. But all in all, that was a pretty good run. I fell on the drop in. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. My Good. favorite reactions coming from Zach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With the Yeti recap, that half cab to start, substantial again uh, from Robin. Yeah, and then rolling down onto that uh, spine below, I think a little bit more of that kind of free ride experience uh, comes into play. You know, turning on a ridge like this is not easy because you can't put snow in front of you. It's an often mistake people make, white room yourself. And that's just unfortunate. You know, it looked like some compromised snow that she landed in and just took her right over the bars. How was the recovery from the tomahawk though? Almost like it was a <laughs> trick. Almost. Wow, that angle of that is pretty cool. Um, you know, I think the way you have to remember about Zoe is while she's doing this, this is her at 20, where is she going to be in next year's natural selection? What about three years from now? Five, I mean. She's definitely setting a bar right, so for not only the young guns to aspire to, but the veterans as well to uh, to take note. And Zoe getting the edge. 
on that first run. She came off of that bench real quick and said, let's go do it again. Well, Travis, you are no stranger to the Tordrillo mountain range. You have shot projects here, the most recent one being Dark Matter, which was special in, in, in its look and its, in its feel. What is it like shooting and making a project in this region? Well, it's unique and to start, being successful and riding sustainably up in this area, it's all about being on Mother Nature's timeline. You have to be ready. Your crew has to be veteran level prepared. And this film is a direct example of, you know, right place, right time, and being ready to strike when it's on. In relation to where our final is taking place, how close are, are we here in, in these pictures? Um, honestly, sprinkled all around, frankly. And you know, this was two years ago. I uh, I saw only with about two weeks' notice that the conditions were lining up for something really special. Hit up Ilya Selhart, and we proceeded to have the most ridiculous uh, two weeks I've ever had of riding in Alaska. And then pairing up and working through post with uh, my old partner Kurt Morgan uh, into really one of my favorite films I've ever worked on. What's different about how you shot this film? Well, what was unique was how run and gun shooting from the hip this project was and we had a really small crew we had one drone one filmer and sean mcmanamy actually was our guide for this project and it was just so run and gun and everyone had to be on point everyone had to succeed for success with this film a classic project if you haven't seen it i suggest you watch it immediately and that helicopter signals that we are back for Run two. The battle for third place will be next between Chris Rassman and Mark McMorris. And Rassman's going to show us the gear needed for optimal performance and how to stay safe in this kind of terrain. My name is Chris Rasman, part of my kit for here in Alaska. We have these custom Arva vests. That is an absolute must if you're riding Alaska. These are the POW Stealth Trigger Mitts. Out here in Alaska, you want to have quick access to your transceiver. You want to be able to flip that thing into search mode without having to take your gloves off. This is the Rip Curl Backcountry Jacket and the Rip Curl Bib Pant. We eliminated the pit vents. They're right there. The Rasmin Raider from Spy Optics. Flux Bindings XFs. These bindings have a pretty stiff base plate, but a lot of flex in the high back, so you don't sacrifice style and you can still tweak your grabs. Lib Technologies T-Rice Pro. It's not too stiff, but it's got a lot of good rebound and snap when you need it. So it's still playful, you can still butter it, but it's got great pop and it'll stomp you through chundry landings and sluffy runouts. One of my favorite words in snowboarding, chundry. Yep. <laughs> Chundry. Rosman dropped. I might in add. Three, two, one. Really appreciate drop. the snowboard choice. Rosman on course. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Cheeky monkey. Look at that. Miller flipping his way into this. Definitely stepping it up. Uh, would you say that Chris is feeling comfortable? It looks like such. Oh. Jinx him just, just a tad there. You know, like you said, Chundry. That's uh, what he got into right there. I, I don't think that's going to affect his score too much, though. Little Crail, hey, how you doing? And looks like he wants a rebate on this, uh, on this blind roller hip with treacherous hazards on all sides. Ooh. Oh, wow. I love the drone perspective. It's crazy. Squeaking through that landing. Just getting to see how tight that little window is. I thought for sure he was going to catch tail on that rock. I know exactly what he's thinking right here. I should have gone faster. <laughs> that, I would say that's probably the most common after effect uh, in hindsight of riding and filming in Alaska. You know, everything is so big and it's so difficult to judge speed, but Guaranteed that's the one one thing that is said the most is I should have gone faster. Well he's going fast right now. 
just tracking straight for the bottom. That start though, the top of the top of that run was so so sick. Yeah, that was just s such his style. So fun, so powerful. And again, you know, this is a game of how safe do you want to play it, and risk oh, is rewarded. Another flip off the top shelf was scary. Ugh. Scary and made it look casual. All right, Mark. Move is the way to And if you're Mark McMorris and, and you saw that that's how Rasmund kicked things off, what's what's the headspace? <laughs> I mean, Rasmund literally did up, that in Mark's face, right in front of him. <laughs> yeah, you can start counting me in. <laughs> but uh, you know, Mark, Mark, Mark is uh, dropping as his brother three, Craig always two, calls him, the closer. One. Drop. Yeah, if there's someone you don't want to leave uh, leave a window open for or anything, it's or, this guy. Yeah, or make just a little, just make him a little angry. Yeah. One of the nicest guys in snowboarding, but uh, yeah, don't don't bum him out if you're competing against him. <laughs> yes, there we go. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. That that rhythm section, I, I love it. The the cliff drop into the double cross court air. Those turns were gorgeous as he comes into the shadows here. A little step down. Yeah, definitely motoring through some compromised snow. But... Stomped. There we go. Maybe not quite as juicy as his first one, but oh, it looks like oh, he wants this again. back to the again. scene of the crime. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, Jumps my God. God. <laughs> that was oh nuts. Oh, my God. And he, you saw, he just said, okay, I just got to pull up on the speed just a hair so I don't land out in the flats. He took that wow. landing. That landing was not given. He, uh, he grinned and bared through it. And he made it look casual. Wow. You know? That was mental. Into trying to set a new land speed record. <laughs> See that aerodynamic? <laughs> Did you see the way he left the drone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is what we came for. That was incredible. That is Mark at his finest, I think, when he's getting to kind of throw a little improv in there. I mean, it's just beautiful to watch him navigate terrain. Oh, in Mark's oh. face. That was Gosh. such a great way to start us run. Gets the melon. Throws the crail. Perfect. I mean, solid run. I, he definitely wanted to go bigger on that front three. This is just a great matchup between these two guys. And then, you know, unfortunate him washing out on that little sunbake right there, but. And then Mark, of course, going to answer back. You got this Miller flip. Well, I'm going to go uh, drop that giant hit at the bottom again. <laughs> I love that he came back to this thing. Stomps it. Wow. The way he held out just on that ride out on the tail was so nuts. Yeah. That's uh, that's strength. Oh, this is going to be an interesting call in this second run. Run two, Woohoo. 88 nice. wow. for McMorris oh, yeah. to Rasmin 68. We love it. All right. One and one. Go one to go. Putting the pressure yes, on the sir. old guy. And you forget, like, in my mind when I'm watching that run, it feels like they're competing for the championship and, like, they're, they're going all out for third. And that's what this is, is so magic about this. As we head into run two for the actual crown, Mikkel Bang, he, he gave us a it. nice look at what's possible oh, in his man. first run. Yeah. Momentum. That's the word Friday's I'm applying right. to this second Dropping run for him three, as he's coming two, off such one, a drop. juicy first run. Yeah, Little tailwind. <laughs> And this, I mean, look, that is literally a five to 600 foot drawn out arc. 
Ooh. Wow. Stunning. Huge front three, all boned out with joy. And it wasn't an easy takeoff. It's got a double transition up the face of that, and then yeah, he's, he's having fun. Just motoring over that into this little gap again. A little hung up, but I really like the gap. Love his toe side carves, too. They just look so, so flowy. Looks like he wants another piece of this treacherous blind takeoff. <laughs> oh my wow. God. Oh my God. Holding it together. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't say it enough. Uh, taking chances, risk and reward. Uh, back five, landing blind, landing switch in. Soft snow is incredibly difficult. He's got to be feeling pretty good about that right now, heading into this uh, lower part where he can just kind of uh, cruise a bit. And I love that he can just mock home and switch. Wow. Yes, Sparky, a true appreciator of good snowboarding. Oh this reminds me a lot more of like the vibe of shooting a video. You know, you're so excited for your friends. You know, wow. what has been created here really, yeah, really emulates that, despite the fact that it's also head to head. Ben saw that too. He definitely <laughs> yeah. saw that. I, I wonder what he's thinking right now. Like how much of it he saw. He definitely saw him disappear over it and he knew he was going five. And there are some people on the ridge watching. Right. I think probably were just stood up, cheered. So he knew, he knew something got thrown. That's an interesting element too, comparing this to like a traditional contest that you really can't see what the person in front of you is doing. Well, as we see Ben Ferguson lock in for his run too, uh, we'll get a look at his gear, what he's riding for his edition of Gear Talk. This is my Alaska kit. This is what I've been riding up here for natural selection. Starting with outerwear. This is the jacket I've basically been running all year. It's a Burton AK swash jacket. For pants, I got these AK457 bib pants, and they are half bib. The bibs are super great for uh, being in the backcountry and riding pal. You don't have to wear the powder skirt on the jacket necessarily if you got the bib pant on. So for boots, these are the Driver X. I do believe they are the stiffest boot in the line. I haven't ridden these boots until this year, and now that I have, I don't think I'll ever change it up. These have been great. I've been running the Hometown Hero. I would ride this thing in the half pipe too. This thing holds an edge great, nice and stiff. It's a camber board, so it's got lots of power in it. As far as bindings, we got the Cartel X here. Super cozy, super comfy, and uh, they fit the boot well, and they keep you in the board. And I can tell you from experience, bibs are key for high-speed tomahawking. <laughs> Insider tip right here. I think you just sold uh, a bunch of bibs for next season. What's Ben got to do? He knows he's got to step it up. It's all right, little wheelie, but it, his momentum is still carrying the projector forward. Boom. Wow. Say hello to my little method friend. Always excited to see a Ferg method. Yeah, it doesn't get old. I mean, he had such a solid run last run, he just bobbled on that uh, back three, so I guess he's trying to just rebate that same run. Oh. Oh. Stepping that up. How's that landing? Wow. Hmm. Got ourselves a battle. Nice. And Bad. there we go. Bolts. Little back three, riding away and uh, answering back to Mickle right now. And I love how he comes out of every trick just powering down the mountain with these big old speed carves into these setups. I love this little cross court air too oh. that he's found there. It's a clean run. I mean, it's a great run. Will it be enough? I, I'm, yeah, as you said that, I'm just sitting here trying to recover from that backside 540 of Mickle Bang, which I know isn't the entire run, but between that and and that three. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. It's perfect, right? He's, he's, he's built upon his first run. He stomped a run that he's obviously, look, look at him jump around for joy. He's happy with that run. <laughs> Dave is going to have some, uh, uh, some work to do in crunching these numbers because both those runs 
Yeah, I don't I don't envy the job of the judges. No, yeah. it's much easier to be sitting here getting to enjoy and comment than not to uh, call that score. Let's yeah to recap it. Let's let's relive uh, the joy of both. That big frontside three from Mikkel to start, gorgeous. Poked. He's got such good style. And then just rolling into this. Oh, oh my gosh. Just riding away. How do you right hold on to that? that? That is that is crazy. It's called meter long shocks. Norwegian yeah, shocks. He's over six foot. And then Ben, of course, having no problem coming in saying, yeah, I, uh, I, I, can, I got one too. I love that it's not so much a backflip as it is a nice boned out like barrel roll. Are we freaking going back to Zelda days right now? This is epic. <laughs> 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 Are you having a flashback? What is your call, Travis? I, it's tough, man. Mickles was so fluid. He took a lot of risk. Um, ben, wow, yeah. I mean, ooh, that's close. I mean, Ben had another feature. Like, he definitely had another feature, but the risk wasn't there. Like, I don't want to say it was a safe line, but it was, it wasn't hanging it out there. Well, self-care is paramount after a day of extreme competition, and we have everything the athletes need to soothe the aches and pains here in one of the most remote places in the world. Being a professional athlete in any sport, it's obviously super important to take care of your body. Snowboarding really beats the hell out of you. The falls can suck sometimes, it can be high impact, so to be able to perform at a high level, you need to stay in shape and just keep your body, which is your tool for the job, healthy. Here at the Torgilla Mountain Lodge, they've got all of the facilities covered. Nice. Yesterday, we went into the, the sauna. Mm -hmm. Stay in there until you're ready to go outside and dip into the cold plunge. It's so nice when you get out of there, you're like, I am invincible yeah. against the cold. I don't know how cold, Did you? do you know how cold it is? Oh God! Cold plunge. The cold plunge here in the lake, which has uh, obviously been a popular thing among guests to get really hot in the sauna and go jump in the cold plunge and do that cycle a few times. Oh yeah, I'm just out here in the hot tub with the <laughs> homies. You know, just relaxing. Kind of go back and forth until your blood really gets flowing, Scandinavian spa style. Feeling it now. Feeling it now. Feels just absolutely perfect going into dinner. You're having a waggy filet. We have some truffle mashed potatoes, a little Brussels, and a delicious demi to top it off. Hey, hey, yeah. Yeah. One thing we've always had is just great food. Our food is exceptional. I mean, this lodge has everything you could want after snowboarding. Yoga room, workout stuff. We've got a masseuse here. Skate skis, we've got classic skis. Is that how you do it? We've got a groomer here in a two-mile trail out to a meadow. The fat bikes to like cruise around on. There's so much fun stuff to keep you occupied and to kind of help for recovering after long days. It's kind of insane. It's luxury out in the middle of nowhere, Alaska. Okay, that's all I got. Well, it's uh, pretty obvious why that is one of my favorite places on the planet. Clearly. Clearly, and uh, I mean, just in general population, uh, you you want that that heat to ice recovery when shredding. But at this level, it is ultra valuable, and Robin Van Jin is gonna need it uh, to 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 build up off of that first run going against Zoe Sadowski Sanat. Robin definitely is stoked to. Uh, build on her first run with this one. You can see her getting psyched right there and putting down that half cab to open things up again. You know, oh, these are beautiful turns. Look at that roost. Yeah, that she cleaned up the cab in. And this is kind of treacherous in here, but see that the confidence she took onto that toe turn. Um, I, 
it seems to me she's got a much more aggressive approach already to this run. Can I just throw a quick shout out to our drone flyers? This, I love this perspective. Yeah, that's our pilot at Gab 707, drone racing league world champion. And I'm so psyched we have this angle and have developed this over the years. I mean, it's immersive. It finally puts the viewer in the seat of what it's like to ride this type of terrain. Can I just say, I absolutely adore Robin's commentary while she's riding. It's so <laughs> sick. She's like stoking herself out. She's like, she, I mean, she just called her own Ollie right up there. It's just awesome. Oh, I see where she's going. Heck yeah, Robin. Wow. I mean, that's tough. She, she stomped the cliff and then washed out on the turn, so. I mean, she's gonna get a little docked, but I, I'm curious to see what the judges do with that. She stepped up, literally, though. It's like you've been saying all along, Travis, you have to take the risk to get the reward. So, she took the risk. <laughs> she's psyched. Nice little pop right there, and now into the bottom cruiser section. I mean, that was a solid run. That was a great run. Yeah. Robin's got to be psyched coming uh, down to the corral from that. You know, she really stepped it up from her first run. And you can hear it right there. She's, uh, she's amped. I just love the way she attacked. There was, it's trademark for her, but it just was straight up attack the course. Yeah, and the top part of that, uh, that top tube that she rode down, she had a few just really committed turns. And it's those subtleties that, you know, riding with confidence and aggression, not putting too much foot on the back, too much weight on the back foot. Um, that's committed riding. You can see a few of our guides and some of the drone pilots down there on the ridge watching over. Well, Zoe, as we know, has a distinct style. You've gotta love the old school mittens. Let's learn a little bit more about what she's running in her first trip to the big backcountry of Alaska. Hi, I'm Zoe Sadowski Sinop. I'm gonna show you my kit. For outerwear, I wear the AK line of Burden. It's all made for high alpine cold conditions, so it keeps me warm. These are my Burton gloves. I wear mittens over gloves just because they uh, keep your hands a bit warmer and they look kind of cooler. These are my snowboard boots. They're Burton Supremes. They're the stiffest and do exactly what you kind of tell it to do. And this is my snowboard. It's a Burton Hometown Hero 152. When I'm riding um, free ride, I like to have a bit more length. Yeah, Lexa X bindings, uh, they're my favorite bindings because they've, they've got this nice snug little heel grip in here that works really well. This is exactly the same as I had in Jackson. Yeah, I really like it. Yeah, it's cool. Good gear is important, but I think almost what's more crucial is being so in tune with your equipment that it literally becomes an extension of oneself. Really cool, worth noting also in current snowboard gear trends is that Zoe and Ben Ferg are riding the same model snowboard, the Hometown Hero. So Robin definitely put the pressure on Zoe for this second run, but I think, you know, if there's anyone that can handle that pressure, it's Zoe. It's like you talked about in, in the semis, uh, Travis. Zoe's ability to just like land powder like it's nothing, but it's not nothing. No, it's not. It's uh, it's a skill that is earned. And while you know she doesn't have the experience, she obviously has ridden ample amounts of New Zealand duff. You know, Robin herself has talked about how Zoe is one of her favorite snowboarders out there right now because she feels that Zoe just has the magic kind of it you know, the natural ability to adapt to any terrain. Ooh. I, I really appreciate her going for the backy on that. Didn't work out for her. This is definitely a, the roughest run that we've seen for Zoe. 
Yeah, unfortunate, but she's still uh, she's still got juice in the tank. And oh, ho, ho, uncovering a bit of a shallow spot in the snowpack right there. Sussing out a new line there. Not totally working out, but uh, trying something. Yeah, and you see, you know, right there, airing back into that slough path, which, you know, that was kind of uh, apparent that there was subpar snow that she aired into right there. I mean, hell of an effort, but uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be one of her throwaways. Little chink in the armor of the young gun who was uh, looking pretty invincible in semis. We like the drama. Now the big question will be if that second number for Robin is higher than Zoe's first run. Of course, first person to cheer for her competitor, Robin Vinton. Love the vibes. A little recap of both of them. Robin came in fired up, pounding on the leg, saying, let's go, and she just attacked. This was so rad watching Robin step to uh, this massive drop right here. Even though she got bobbled right after she landed, still, as we've been saying, risk leads to reward. And uh, in the judging criteria, you know, it, it, it was a washout. It wasn't a full fall. And of course, Zoe coming in, Whoa. going down on the backflip. Just did but, not quite have the pop. Yeah. But choosing to throw the backflip. Exactly. Right here, that little cross court transfer was dope. And then right back into that slough runnel, ah. which I think that's where uh, that's where a little bit more experience might uh, inform on, one ready. not to air into that hard snow. All right. Judges, say you what? Oh, this is where it gets interesting. Robin Van Jen now, that second run, the highest score so far. And it all is going to come down to run three. And the helicopter will scoop them back up to the top for these final runs. And Travis and Mary, I mean, it never gets old to take this way up to the top. No, it is, there's something magic about being bumped up to the top of the mountain in 30 seconds. And, you know, whether it's foot power, chairlift, snowmobile, you name it, they all have their magic little components, but getting lifted, it's, it's hard to beat. And with that, we'll check in with T-Bird before we head into this third and final run. Thanks guys. The atmosphere is incredible here at the top of DFC at Natural Selection. We're about to get the third and final runs underway here as Robin Van Jin and Mikkel Bang are in the lead. However, Ben Ferguson and Zoe sadowski Sinat have one more run to try to win this Bronco sport and take home the title. I can't wait to see what happens. The snow is insane, the course is running fast, and the riders are hyped. Guys, let's get this thing underway. Thank you, T-Bird, the Bronco factor. Giving away cars in Alaska, Travis. Yeah, we're, we're bringing it back to old school, man. It's been a while since, uh, since vehicles have been uh, given away as prizes. Chris Rassman and Mark McMorris, neither one will be getting a car, but the bragging rights of making podium here in Alaska are huge. And what I've loved about this, Mary, is that both these riders have ridden as if this was the final. Totally. I think that's a testament to what's on the line right now, you know, more than vehicles even, which is very exciting, is like you said, it's it's the cachet of getting to stand on the natural selection podium. It's the cachet of being one of the best backcountry freestyle riders in the world. All right, comboing it back three into front three. Stomp, not quite as clean as I think you wanted it to be, but... Travis, as you, you see these parts of the course that weren't shadowed getting shadowed as the sun comes up. How does that affect riding this course? Uh, it, it affects it a lot. I mean, that is literally the name of the game of uh, filming snowboarding. Uh, you need light. And the sun 
rips across the sky, and these, you know, this venue is tilted uh, pretty directly north. It's just got a little bit of east. We're talking morning light, and the sun moves quick. It's already starting to deteriorate a little bit. Oh, making up for it with that big one. Yeah, Rasmus looked good the last couple uh, last couple turns right into that hit. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, I love that trick. Front three poking out stalefish. Something I cannot do. Maybe appreciate it so much more. Um, it was a good run. It was a solid run. I uh, ah, again, it's got a beautiful stalefish. Definitely blasted off that critical hit. Um, landed almost as far as Mickel's back five. Not quite. But again, I think there is definitely some room for Mick Morris to come in. It's going to be close. Uh, I think that he might have improved on his last score, but I think this one's definitely going to come down to the judges. And <laughs> unfortunately for Chris, Mark's got one more run. But that's okay. What's that? Landed everything. Well, that's yep. going to need to be a big score as McMorris is already in the lead. And you yeah, know boys. he's not going to play safe and rest on <laughs> laurels. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what he does. Copy that. Rider is ready. Dropping in three, two, one, drop. Mark McMorris on course. Yes, Marky. He thrives in this position that he's in right now. This is true. There's been so many competitions where Mark has been the last one to drop. And many times when he's not leading. Oh. Oh. And in this case, of course, with already the lead, I mean, it gives him room to play. Yeah, that first slob air. I mean, I could feel it. It <laughs> felt good. <laughs> Oh, oh wow. interesting. Ooh, the butter. Yeah. Butter's a rock garden. Yeah. You know, slipped out, but I think that he just is that much more motivated. And I don't think we've seen him go over that. That was kind of a new line. And again, as, as conditions kind of deteriorate a little bit with additional sloughs. And Jesus. Oh, wow. <laughs> Goodness. Goodness gracious, Mark McMorris. How? Sending it. This is, uh, this is what he does. And again, it wasn't the cleanest landing, but it wasn't a complete bail. Any other human might have just completely exploded into a few different pieces, and he held that together. Wow. Oh, that is not an easy takeoff. <laughs> As he knows, he, uh, you know, I, even just comparing those two tricks on that particular feature, I mean, you know, that, that was definitely his best, stomping that big front three with the poked out stale fish. Um, I think I'd give it to the clean three. Even over the, the boosted seven, it was just a little bit of a too scratchy of a landing. All right. Holy amplitude. Looks like the crowd's getting bigger down here. I saw in that back seven, that was sick. Not an easy takeoff. That was a tricky run, I don't know. Yeah. They got kind of like mushed into the. Let's take a look at, at this recap here to see if there is a chance that this run could have eclipsed Mark's high score so far. Yeah, that combo's epic. That, that, that second takeoff has kind of given everyone a little bit of difficulty. But this is the money feature. And this is where that full appraisal really comes into play because, you know, landing this clean and with that really nice style, is going to be impressive with the judging. That that was impressive. <laughs> this is a heavy matchup. 
right here he just uh, just got a little loose <laughs> look at him over the rock and you can see how you know a lot of these features man you gotta land on your board your board is your shield I think it's gonna be close. Yeah, yeah I agree. Definitely. And an 84 for Rasman. Four points from Mark McMorris's 88 in his second run, which means that Mark McMorris heading to the podium. Wow. That's, that's a well earned third place. And, uh, you know, I think it, it all goes back to Mark really just throwing it all on black with that big cliff mid slope. I mean, I think that's what put him over. I love that mutual respect between the two of them. As you see, Mikkel and Ben scoping for their final run as Hannah Beeman and her karaoke mic are with Mark. Hey, Mark, that was a, that was a great last run. How do you feel about it? Last run was super fun. Um, no, I was a little wobbly. I'll definitely uh, walk home most proud of the second run. But a um, little moment of brilliance, almost kind of wheelied the back seven, but that hit was quite a bit bigger than I thought it was. I was finished the back seven. I was like, holy shit, I'm still 10 feet in the air. So um, exciting times. Thank you, Georgia Little Mountain Lodge. This is awesome. Good job today. You guys are all shredding. Pretty exciting. I love Hannah Beeman's uh, karaoke mic. If you ever get a privilege to ride with her, you might see her in the lift line with it, singing the song. But how about Sparky being like, I opened up and I was like, oh, I'm I'm still here flying. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I love Mark because he, he will go all in. As will Mikkel Bang, who is in the lead but knows that that means nothing against Ben Ferguson. Two, one, two distinct styles. There We've we enjoyed their particulars in their first two runs. And Mikkel, for sure, will be aiming to lay it all out here in this last one. I mean, it's game on right now. Their best scores are only three points apart. So this final run, you know, it could go either way. Compressing but getting the five around. And, uh, you know, this is mastery. Mikkel's first two runs. I think two of the highest scores. This guy's riding switch right now. Boom. Oof. Beautiful switchback one into... Uh... God, did I mention how much I love gaps? <laughs> <laughs> For any viewers at home that aren't familiar with that trick too that is a very challenging trick the switchback one so doing that here on alaskan terrain is you know it's low rotation tons of style oh I'm trying to combo it into the back one that was a heartbreak right there you know it, it's so difficult the, the the tiny margin of error trying to land a trick like that where your weight has to be forward enough where you're not going to wash out and kind of wheelie like mickel did landing bolts and being a little too far over the board where you're gonna cartwheel over the front. And and that's why I appreciate him, you know, taking such a chance with trying a trick like that. Yeah, all day, all from the semis on through, like risk has definitely been the feature of Mikkel's riding. And that's something that we've seen of him throughout the tour at the Jackson event when he did that three rock tap. I mean, he's always kind of going out of the box and a bit beyond. Yeah, well, that three point lead is slim now, and Ben Ferguson knows it. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's looking to seize this opportunity right now, and uh, I imagine he's not going to hold back this run. Rocks now exposed in the bomb hole of the landing of that bottom feature. Yeah, Ben copied that. Thank you. Chris Rasman again coming through with the intel from the bottom of the course. That is not something that's just 
pertinent to a competition setting like this. That is standard operating in the backcountry. Driver is ready. Dropping in three, two, one, drop. Ben on course. Yeah, Ben. Ben Ferguson, three points behind as we are looking to crown a champion for this initial natural selection tour. I can't believe we're here at the final run of men's finals, of the final stop of the natural selection tour. And again, doesn't get old. He's got a damn fine method. For his third time down this route, you can really see that the snow has degraded significantly, and it's, uh, it's causing a bit of a problem, it seems like. Oh, well, yeah, you nailed that one, Mary. Um, it's the challenge of riding up here. You know, on one hand, uh, you know, on one hand, you have what becomes more familiar when you when you ride a line again and again, the same line. But I think that's also the cons of this is if you don't lay it down first or second try, mm. you know, you're dealing with tracks, and tracks do not make it easy to stomp. And you could hear that change of, of, of snow under his board in that deeply shaded area as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, he knows it. He knows there's, uh, at this point, there's really not that much more opportunity left on the course. Ben will enjoy the remainder of this run, but at the same time, know that he had a window with this, just that three-point lead. As you see, Mikkel already being congratulated. Unofficially by the homies, we'll wait for the score. But it looks like Mikkel is going to be our inaugural natural selection champion. I know, uh, I know a lot of people are uh, <clears throat> asking for their money on bets on this event right now. No doubt, as we take a look back, you saw the focus in Mikkel's eyes as he was not uh, pretending like he had it in the bag, switching things up with the 540 to start things off, Travis. Yeah, I mean, definitely upping the ante uh, with this run, right, and switch into that switchback one, and then I think that was his best best grease on that gap and right here just kind of going for broke potential to improve upon a score with that backside 180 I like that he's still hunting a higher score mm. definitely dropping at this time of day after this many riders have ridden down the course had an effect on Ben's run for sure you could see him having a, you can see him having trouble in the the landing that's so trucked out right there yeah, and I think he could have even salvaged it with that crash had he comboed that seven into something spicy a little lower down the course, but um, it was not meant to be. We will get the official word. Remember Mikkel sitting on that 90 in run two, and it will stay as Mikkel Bang is our official Natural selection champ. I know Mikkel, and he might not look like it, but he is so freaking psyched right now. <laughs> Mikkel has had a litany of incredible video parts, but this is an honor of a totally different kind. You know, the last podium he stood on, I believe, was 2010. And in that time, he's become one of the world's most respected backcountry riders. And now, back on the top. <laughs> vibes, vibes, vibes all around. And even Ben says, he got me, but I'm stoked for you, buddy. You know, even though there's a first, second, third place, it really does seem like a group effort. And we are not done. We still got another champ to crown. Robin Van Jin in the lead after Zoe Sadowski-Sanat was in the lead from her first run. 
and it is a new game. One run is going to take it here. Who will it be? You good, Robin? Yeah, Robin loves to get herself so worked up. You know, competing is, is kind of new to her, so you can only imagine the nerves, anxiety, excitement, anticipation she's going through right now. One thing she's talked about in the past is that she kind of has to tone herself down a little bit because she hasn't competed a lot in, and the adrenaline will get to her and she's like, I'm working on kind of controlling that so that I can just execute what I want to be riding. Yeah, you can see she oversiked a little bit right there, but I don't think that is going to affect her too. There's a lot of room in both of these uh, scores between Robin and Zoe. There's, there's room. I want to see if Robin's going to go for that uh, massive cliff again. Yeah, she's putting her turns in the right places. You know, Robin is a back-to-back -back video part of the year winner. She's been a rider of the year, and she has continually made a mark in the backcountry for not only women riders, but snowboarders in general. And I think her performance here today only continues to solidify her as a leader in this type of terrain. Oh, I was about to say, there we go. Is she gonna take it back to the top one more time? She, there's still some redemption left. Oh, this is exciting. Relentless. This is why we love RVG. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh, and she rides away. That is that is just a cherry on top of her run. <laughs> that was burly. Yeah, you could see it. It took everything that she had to stomp that. And we're giving her the stomp, right? I mean the no, that was full stomp. I mean she washed wow. out in some uh, you know, in some kind of old sloughed poor snow quality below, which which it's going to affect her score a little, but, um, the, yeah, the cliff was clean. You can hear her breathing hard. <laughs> wow. Solid, solid run from Robin. I just, you know, whenever you, when you, when you meet Robin, you just, and you hang out with her. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you're going for is Robin loves snowboarding. Yes. She absolutely loves it. And that bleeds through. You see it when you watch her ride. It's awesome. And tough. <laughs> so <laughs> tough. Yes. The veteran sending a message up to the top saying, listen, Zoe Skodowski Sanat, you are one of my favorite snowboarders. But please don't get it twisted. You're going to have to take this from me. Yeah, and that's the, that's the beauty of this format. It's, uh, you got to get through every round. You got to be the overall best rider to stand atop this, this podium. Whew. Here we go, our final run of natural selection. Young Zoe Sadowski Sinat. She was a wild card at Jackson Hole. Many people didn't think that she would make it out of the first round. She did more than that. She won the event and let us know just how deep her skill set is when it comes to being an all around snowboarder. Have fun, Zoe. And I remember in Jackson, her last run was her best run of the event. We are most definitely in a renaissance on the side of women snowboarding right now. And I think this matchup between Robin and Zoe is a showcase of that. You know, the veteran, the rookie, and both of them riding so well and just pushing the boundaries of what has been done before in terrain like this. Handling herself through a challenging section of the venue.
Kind of getting uh, pushed around a little bit in those tracks. Oh, oh and no problem <laughs> landing the backy. Oh, and that takeoff was not easy. No. She had like a split second to set up. You know, she just has a really nice ollie that she pops off little little kickers, uh, little pops. That, uh, that landing over there, getting almost everybody who heads that direction. Love that speed floater. You can hear her just psyched, hooting, hollering. One last tail grab for New Zealand. I think Zoe totally showed up in Alaska. You know, I think she gave us a glimpse at the years to come for her, but also for uh, the female snowboarders around who are rising up in this generation. And you could see it in Robin's eyes. She was sweating it. That was that was a that was the look of. Yeah. Did she just take it? I mean. She did, she did have a, she did have a crash. Oh, well, thankfully we get a little, get a little recap, a little nice perspective done, coming up. Yeah, Zoe. Nice ride. You are so sick. Have you guys? Good. <laughs> That's just it. Will it be enough? I, I, I have, have no I idea. I like that you have no idea because I too have no idea. I will third that. I have no idea also. Three no ideas. Yeti recap. Help us get an idea. Yeah, this is where I'm psyched in the confidence I know I have in our judges. Our judges are top notch. Now, Robin came in a little hot, slipped up a bit on the half cab. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the butt check here but then rolling down to this and laces out Dan. <laughs> Stomps this cliff. And remember, this isn't about these two runs. It's about the best run between the six from these women. And Zoe really, you know, navigating a fairly tracked out line, but not having a problem just stomping that backflip. Love that little shifty. Fortunate. One, one crash. The only chink in her otherwise beautiful run. Oh my god. Hmm. I don't know. That was crazy. Holy shit. We're about to find out here. What a, just what great riding from from both women. And the ultimate rematch, we've come full circle yes. from Jackson to here. Oh, and it's not enough. Robin Van Jin is going to lose her mind right now. I think she might be in shock. <laughs> yes, the loudest, the loudest woman in the room suddenly doesn't know what to say. As that was to Zoe, Zoe sadowski Sanat's best run, but nowhere near Robin's. And like you said from the very top, Mary, I mean, Zoe taking her out in Jackson. Wow, this is so cool. Oh my God. Honestly, I love how excited both of them are. This is, a, this is amazing. Zoe might be 20, but Robin looks like she's 15 right now. <laughs> Facts. I think... Uh, her uh, partner, Austin Sweden, and her yellow lab, Stella, are going to be so stoked right now. We got two champions. As we take a look at the winning run, once again, for Robin Van Jen. Yeah, I think that, that upper tube section, too, that didn't get shown in this, um, she just had so much power and flow down this line. And, you know, the turns and the approach to the run are a huge part of the score as well. And stepping to this behemoth is such a 
massive decision that I think even the bobble right after the landing wasn't enough to affect the score. Yeah, you said it during that run, Travis. You, you said, that I think the judges will accept that she, she landed that and, and got caught up in bad snow afterwards because that was her highest score. And I just love that Zoe was ahead and that did not phase Robin one bit in that second run. With this win, Robin has proven definitively through her video parts through today that she is a force to be reckoned with in the backcountry and will continue to be so. Dropping in three, two, and Mickle Bang. Drop. I mean, the theme with him was risk and style for miles, and he was consistent all day. I'll definitely say that uh, Mickle was doing the least amount of turns down this face. Honestly, it's just really exciting to see Mickle's riding taken outside of video parts and put into this context and to see him excel. Just, he has so much style, it's a pleasure to watch. Yeah, full send, full commitment, and one tired back leg. <laughs> <laughs> Mark McMorris with third, Ben Ferguson in second, and Mikkel Bang taking the whole thing home. And right about now, I think we should give away some hardware, some awards, some vehicles for this historical natural selection season. And we'll throw it over to T-Bird, Tom Monterosso. Thanks, guys. First and foremost, I would like to thank all of the riders, all the Natural Selection staff for putting on an incredible show. Well done. Secondly, I want to introduce Carter Westfall, the CEO of the Natural Selection Tour, who is going to hand out the trophy to our men's champion. Hey, thanks, T-Bird. On behalf of the Natural Selection Tour, really exciting 2021 Hemp Fusion Natural Selection here at Tordrilla Mountain Lodge, and as winner, Receive the keys to your new Bronco Sport. We'll need to get it to Norway. Mickle Bang. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Mickle! Yeah. And as champion of the Natural Selection Tour, first year, your trophy, sir. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Mickle, describe the course a little bit. How was the course running today? What were the snow conditions like? How was the weather? The course today, was the snow was definitely not as deep as I thought it was going to be, but it was kind of perfect. It was stable. Uh, the slough wasn't moving too fast. It kind of made it easier to go up and hit hit things. And yeah, it was it was just perfect. Uh, we made it happen, and yeah, and now this. So and going <laughs> incredible. Into this, going into this season of the inaugural first time ever, we're we're putting on the Natural Selection Tour. Did you ever imagine you'd be in Alaska holding this trophy? <laughs> Honestly, I did not imagine that I would get this far. And yeah, it's such a blessing. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm speechless. I can't believe it. I'm so grateful and glad to be here in the first place. And this is just icing on the cake. All right, Mickle Bang, everybody. Okay, now I would like to introduce Cersei Wallace, legendary former pro snowboarder and executive producer of the Natural Selection Tour. She is gonna hand out the trophy to our women's champion. Cersei? And I just also wanna say that this is on behalf of Travis Rice, the creator of Natural Selection, and Robin. Yeah! yeah. We're going to give you the keys to your very own Bronco Sport. Congratulations. Wow, thank you. Yeah, Robin. So you spoke to Travis via sat phone earlier. <laughs> what did he say? Uh, he was just asking about the venue and uh, how everything went. And yeah, I honestly, was, I'm so over the moon. I, I, I'm having trouble talking. <laughs> so I was just like... It's kind of silent on the phone. You know, I told him he could name his child after me if he wanted to. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't, I'm just, I'm so honored. This is insane. The field of writers, I'm just, 
It's incredible to even land here. I like feel like I'm in a crazy dream right now. Well, you've had a wild run, right? Jackson, unfortunately, got eliminated, got mm -hmm. that second chance in, in uh, Bald Face Valhalla. You took the one there, and then you went back to back here in Alaska. That's an incredible run. Yeah, it has been a roller coaster to say the least. Um, and I know that's not how the tour is normally going to happen, but I, I just can't believe that I'm here and riding against Zoe, my favorite snowboarder on the planet right here, just pushing me harder than I ever have been pushed, ever. I've never really competed, and this was brand new learning experience, and I'm just, I'm so stoked. This is the very beginning of the progression of women's backcountry freestyle, and I'm so excited to see where it goes. Congratulations, Robin. Yeah. Robin, baby. Yeah. That's a wrap from the Tordrillo Mountains up here in Alaska at the 2021 Natural Selection. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Tom. And as was alluded to by the riders receiving their trophies, Travis, you are with us here in studio because you just had your first child. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's so incredible. Uh, love of my life, Brooke and I just brought a beautiful baby boy into this world. Couldn't be happier. Making snowboarding history with natural selection and your first child, congratulations, sir. And of course, sustainability has always been a key to natural selection. Let's learn more about this cause. When I first met Travis three years ago, you know, he talked about building the tour, but he said, look, this is, this is not just about snowboarding. This is about a deeper mission to unite the industry to elevate the conversation around things like conservation and sustainability because we need to protect this environment that we live in if we want to enjoy snowboarding you know, for future generations. As part of our mission with the Natural Selection Tour, it's been critical for us to partner with like-minded brands such as Yeti. You know, companies like this, they've invested so much on their own in terms of sustainability. We've really been trying to eliminate anything single use from our event program. Like everything is coming back, everything's getting washed, everything's getting reused, we're throwing nothing away. In executing the event at Jackson Hole, it's been really important for us to focus on waste reduction. You know, eliminating single-use plastic, leveraging the fact that Yeti had hydration towers on site. I'd say what has been most critical for us is just having partners who would engage with us every step of the way in terms of the strategic planning, a transfer of knowledge, because we've learned a lot in year one and we'll continue to improve in future years. There's no hiding the fact that we're using carbon intensive vehicles for these events, but we're very conscious of tracking all that, making sure that we're not only offsetting, but also drawing down that amount so our events have a net positive impact. We felt it was important to have a strategic partnership with an expert in the field, such as Conservation International. They've done amazing work around the world. It's very important for us to keep a record and to calculate what our carbon footprint is, and then invest in those carbon offsetting credits with really key projects like the reforestation efforts of Conservation International in Kenya. We've always focused on Mother Nature as the main character. The snowboarding's amazing, the stories are amazing, but at the end of the day, these mountains you see around us, they're the star of the show. And we wanna celebrate them. Um, we wanna find ways to, to educate people and support things like conservation and sustainability so that snowboarding is something our future generations can enjoy. And Travis, one of the things that I love about this natural selection tour is that the environment really is just as much of a focus as the snowboarding itself, and that what we just saw is not a one-off. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the riding is the tent pole of this whole movement. But ultimately, you know, this is our first year, and I'm really excited to see where we can bring that intentional momentum to and really execute on programs and education that have the ability to really make a difference. Indeed, to celebrate where we play. Final thoughts on this, this final, this season, Mary. You know, the paradigm has not just been shifted, it has been fully reset. These three stops, this finals here today, what competition is has been reinvented by the natural selection tour amen and with that for travis rice and mary walsh i am salema masakella and we will see you next season i think this entire natural selection tour 
is going to change snowboarding for the better. Probably some of the gnarliest riding I've ever done and been a part of has been from this contest. It's just intense, it's scary, it's big, it's steep, it's fast. Something looks like it's a 10 or 20 foot air from the sky. You get on slope, all of a sudden that gap is 60 feet. Wow, this is massive. Lots of excitement and adrenaline. There's no built features, there's no course, and you have to pick your spots. bottom of the run here in Alaska that's like pretty badass like it's another level to lace a clean Alaska line I feel like straight up it's like the fastest you'll ever go on your snowboard it's insane each stop of the tour is totally different Jackson Hole we've been working on for two years meticulously thought out well created unbelievable freestyle backcountry park it's like being in a video game, you know? Perfect pow, perfect kickers everywhere. <laughs> Zoe sadowski sanats the inaugural women's champion of natural selection. Moving from that to the bald face Valhalla tenure, still freestyle heavy, but all natural terrain. No built features, hazards everywhere. It was almost as important to have experience in the backcountry and know how to select terrain as it was to be a good snowboarder, I would say. We hadn't really seen each other or been together since COVID hit last year. And so just to kind of bring everybody back and snowboard together again, it felt so good. Alaska is the bald faced Valhalla event on steroids. The best place to ride lines on the planet. Leading up to Alaska, which is one of the best places to ride in the world, you know, and then doing the same thing here, it's just unreal. I think Mikkel, of all the riders here, probably has the most AK time under his belt. I think that experience counts for a lot up here. It was really awesome to see Robin finally get that vindication, get that big win. Every event was so different that at different events, you kind of had to like shift and evolve as it went and uh, just, you know, kind of trying to flow like water. I 
Travis is known for pushing people to the absolute pinnacle of their performance. He's the king motivator. It's such an incredible opportunity that he created for all of us, and it's really uplifting snowboarding as a whole. You know, being the visionary behind this thing is responsible for that. Even though what Travis and the crew pulled off was monumental, this is just the start. For me, uh, my dream has always just been to ski and be in the mountains a lot. You know, I started skiing year-round in 1990. Um, I've been skiing about 250 to 280 days a year since then. And I'm really just uh, feeling, feeling my addiction to shred. And the more I shred, the more uh, people want to ride with us. So if we just focus on our dreams, you know, dreams do come true if you, you, you stay the path and uh, to share it with people is what makes it so special. Greg Harms, our incredible guide, he gets a little fired up. We got here, he's been on this like booyah binge. Booyah! It's catching on. Booyah! 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 I think he's been out here for like 13 weeks straight. I'm addicted to blower. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want to quit. We basically had an all-time morning. Super duper booyah. Shut up. And now we came across this incredible feature where step down jump over here, step down jump over here, and then maybe a midday kicker. A little more challenging to find the good stuff, but uh, we think this area is still going to be productive and we're going to go for it. Booyah. Just trying to get other people stoked on life and create moments or take up those empty spaces and fill them up with excitement, I think is the way to live life. So, I couldn't see. I'm, really bright. I'm Sean and I'm a guide. <laughs> hey. How's it going? Good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Other thing I could say is, you know, I feel super lucky to have started a, a company with some of my best mountain friends who are world-class ski guides and full crackheads for their sport. And their dream is uh, very aligned with mine. And it's like a dream come true to actually shred and work with your friends.